Channel Academy. I'm Gary Williams. Very pleased to be joined again by John Cook, 11-time winner on the PGA Tour, 10 additional wins on PGA Tour champions, currently sitting on blackjack, member of the victorious <laughs> Ryder Cup team, U.S. Amateur champion. Always good to be with you, my friend. Pleasure, my friend. Thank All right, you. This is your short game special, and this is an area of the game that amateurs, I think, neglect a lot. They right. don't hit a lot of greens. They right. find themselves right. in, in, you know, unusual areas, yardages. So let's start right here. We've got two flag locations set up at two different distances. Talk about your process when it comes to shots like this. Yeah, we have a 60-yard shot over here. And first of all, we'll talk a little bit about mechanics, and then it's about feel and then reaction. So as far as my mechanics go, I like to set the club, nice solid foundation. We're going to keep the upper body moving this way never throwing the, the the club never letting the arms take over it's all about upper body speed and then letting the left side turn let the the upper body keep moving and the shoulders keep turning as well john your setup on shots of this distance is it similar if you're standing in the middle of fairway from 150 160 yards as far as weight balance alignment Alignment's going to be a little bit left. Okay. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit left of the target. If we're going to the 60-yard target right here, my, my body's going to be aimed a little bit to the left, and that's going to allow my upper body then to keep turning to the left and holding that face of that club you know, right a as a square a as possible and not letting the arms and the, the, and the hands take over. So I'm going to line a little bit to the left, um, but I'm going to get that club nice and rotated. I'm going to hold that and let my upper body then take over and keep turning. Okay, let's see a few. Couple here, 60 yard shot. That's very nice. I'm gonna laser this with our Bushnell. You're spot on. 60 yards. 60 yards, and it, it, this is awkward. It's not a, obviously it's not a full 59 degree like I have. It's, it's, a, it's a much shorter than that, but you find yourself, I, I don't mind getting these shots. I like these shots. Mm -hmm. um, I'd rather have this shot than lay it too far back. Uh, so, you know, then it's just a matter of dialing it in. Good mechanics, nice rotation, good firm, good solid, the lower body foundation. And then trust my eye. I'm going to trust my eye like a, you know, shooting a basketball. I'm going to look at that. I'm going to react to that pin and then go ahead and free it up. John, the one word you just used, which I think is vital for the amateur golfer, free yourself up. You get over a shot, you use the word awkward as well. Awkward creates tension. Correct. You've got to take the tension out of your body Correct. for shots of this distance. Absolutely. When you practice, you practice mechanics, you practice technical, but when you get out on the golf course, you don't free it up. You don't use that. You, now you're reacting to the situation. You're acting to the wind. You're acting to where the, the pin is located on the green. You'll get a lot of information by just looking at that flag, and I will react then to that. I'll let that flag and that whole location send me information so then I can process that and then adjust to the shot. Okay, let's see one more. One more here. Okay. I'm receiving the info. Now just free it up, let it go. There we go. All right, we're just getting started here because this is John's short game special. So we're going to talk about chipping. He had some very important moments in his career <laughs> chipping the golf ball to win golf tournaments, not to mention putting as well. Sandy, it's a little bit wet, and if you pull out anything but putter, it's disaster. So if I'm only this far off the off the putting surface, and I only have to go to this this whole location right here, mm -hmm. I'm going to putt this maybe a hundred percent of the time. Wow. Ken Venturi always talked about a bad putt from off the green is much better than a bad chip. So when you try to do that, 
It, you'll save shots around the green. You won't be pitching the ball from, from all over the place. Okay, before you putt a few, you basically, you roughly have the same distance from the edge of the putting surface and then from the edge of the putting surface to the hole. Now, what's your philosophy about pin in, pin out? I figured that if, if I'm pitching the ball, I would leave the pin in. Okay. I'm, because that's just a mindset. And this is only the way that I, I think about it. If I'm putting the ball, I'm, it, I'm, at, I'm basically reacting like I'm on the green, and I would have the pin out. Okay. So I would take this pin out for sure. So my main objective is just to feel what this is going to do to get to the putting surface. Okay. And because there's going to be a little bit of um, pace going through here, all you want to do to continue that pace is to get it on the putting surface, then it will roll out. Okay, we'll see a few. Basic putting stroke, I'm just now feeding, information is feeding to me that's a little bit slower here for this first 15 feet, so I'm really concentrating on getting it through this first cut. And then it rolls out. That's very good pace. Now I'm going to put the flag back in and one of the things that I know that you can explain to the amateur golfer is that from that location you really do have a fair number of options, don't you, in your bag? Exactly. You've got 14 clubs in your bag. Basically you could use any one of them. Raymond Floyd would pitch this ball a hundred percent of the time and that's just Raymond and as great as hands as he was he would probably pitch this with maybe a, a seven iron and he right. would just call it a lofted putt. He would use a putting stroke and he would do that. And hey, when you have hands like he had, I would do it. You got a little nervous hands, you feel a little bit nervous about what's going on, I grab that putter 100% of the time. Okay, so outside of the putter, what's, what would be your other option from right there? Grab I would, it out of your bag. There's a couple things I, I might do. I might take out a seven iron okay. and, and, and do what, what Raymond would do, and that's yeah. just a full putting stroke, but you're putting with loft, as, as he would say. And a putting grip as well? Putting grip as well. Just trying to get it through the first cut. That for me would be acceptable and it's five feet. Sure. And that was pretty good. You just, you just don't know if you're pitching the ball, what, how, how it's going to react once it hits in the grass. Okay. The other option, now you take out hybrids. Everybody's got a hybrid now. Yep. This is my three hybrid. Um, What's the degree of loft on that club? This would be 17 okay. degrees. So it, basically you're putting with loft again. But the, the key here is it's not so much a putting stroke as you're going to try to compress the back of the ball. So I'm going to have my hands ahead and use my putting stroke. See, unlike that 7-iron, it never got off the ground. No, it did not. There's nothing in here that's going to send it offline or it's not going to hit a wet spot and check. That ball rolled pretty nice. Okay, get, grab your sand wedge. I know that you don't find that to be the most practical choice for this particular shot, but just basic fundamentals if you're going to chip the golf ball with your sand wedge. Off these tight lies, it is ultra important that you, you don't take a divot because it could go to right there, you could <laughs> double hit it, or you could belly it. So um, it's very important to get the club rotated and held. I'm really trying to feel where the bottom of my swing is. It's not very hard. You have to keep the body moving. A little bit of shaft lean, hold that finish, find the bottom. That had some nice check on it. had a nice check and release to it. Well, John, obviously you, you can chip with that sand wedge, but, but you're telling the viewer out there that there are more practical options, and he, he chipped in a couple times <laughs> at the Hope, so we wanted to celebrate that. <laughs> when we continue, he's made miles of putts in his life in the game of golf. We'll talk about putting and also bunker plays. We continue. He's short game special. We'll put it on somebody else's All right, let's wrap this up. <laughs> Weeds. Explain that to the viewer, first of all. Yeah, it's something that uh, a good friend of mine and kind of my eyes nowadays, uh, Jamie Mulligan, kind of developed there at Virginia Country Club in Long Beach, where I'm a member, and, and that's where I practice and play a lot of my golf out west. But he came up with a, a, a system that's, 
is, is pretty basic. It's just a line. A straight putt is a 4.5, straight putt. Okay. And then a cup outside would be a 6, a cup outside left would be a 3, the right edge is a 5, and the, and the left edge is a 4, and you just kind of go from there. So what this does, it gets me a little more precise on where in the, in the actual hole I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start this putt. And this is really to get your eye nice and precise on what a straight putt is, and that would be a 4.5. Uh, so you, you get your eye trained, you get your setup, you get your routine. I'm looking right in the center of the hole. That is a 4.5. That putt went pretty straight. I'm gonna go back to maybe you know inside six feet or so, doing the same type of drill. I'm just getting my eye nice and precise. Whatever your routine is, you've got a straight putt. Keep your head steady. Swing the putter. And John, anybody who has watched you really since the early 80s when you turned professional, it, very conventional. You have not had many incarnations of the, the way you grip the putter right. and, and your posture. It's yeah. been very much the same, has it not? It, it has, and I haven't really varied much other than the type of putter that I've used. You know, the putter I'm using now has gotten me more square. I can see the lines a little bit better. But it's about learning to make putts, learning the speeds of the greens. The, the agronomy has changed on the greens as well. You have Bermuda grass now that's not as grainy as it used to be. So uh, you l have to learn to read the greens. But if you can start from three feet and in to six feet and you find a straight putt, you can really dial your eye in. You can really be precise. If you, then you start putting around to different holes. And now you can really see what you know. a right edge putt to me is a five. A left edge putt is a four. If I'm talking to my caddy, I'm, I'm looking at that and I'm going, well, I like it a little bit inside. How much inside? Well, I like a 4.8. It just gets you, it, when you get over it now, you're thinking 4.5, 4.8. You're not thinking about what you're going to have to do mechanically. You're thinking about what you have to do to start it on that straight line that you've been practicing on. And John, you, you do subscribe to the theory that, you know, if you're on a practice putting green, you need to see the ball go in the hole. Absolutely. The, the, the one thing that you need to learn is don't be afraid to see that ball in the, go in the hole. Get used to seeing that golf ball go in the hole. My dad said never, never apologize for making putts. <laughs> Nobody, n no great putter ever apologized for making putts. So, you know, see that ball go in the hole. Get it ingrained in your mind. I practice putt with one ball normally when I'm getting ready to go out and play for the reason that I want to hit one putt. I don't get another shot. I don't get another chance to rake one back and try it again. So I was always, you know, I was then taught to go from the practice tee to the first tee by doing your routine. Mm. Those are the types of things psychologically that get you ready to do what you're going to do when you go out and you play competitive golf. When we continue here on Golf Channel Academy, bunker play. It's so vital to be adequate. doesn't change. Club goes up, back down your body, keep some speed. Body left, keep that angle right there. Face is pointed towards the, the hole location, keep some speed. Welcome back to John Cook's Short Game Special on Golf Channel Academy. And John, you know, we, we talked about some short distance putting. Now let's talk about putting for distance. You've got a 45 footer here. Take us through your approach as you have a putt of this distance. You know, un unlike short putts where you have to get speed and direction right to make putts, you're not really trying to make these. These happen. Um, so you really want to get the distance correct. You want to get your pacing right. I walk off my putts. I do pace my putts. I've paced this off at 15 steps, 45 feet. Mm -hmm. um, so now I've got a feel. I'm, I, I've hit putts on the practice green. I kind of know what the pace is going to be. So I, I do pace off putts. So I have an idea of exactly how hard I need to hit these putts. You're not trying to make these. If they go in, fantastic. If they don't, you know what? You run up, you tap it in. That's, that's stress-free. So I want to do all my work here rather than just get it up there and then do all the work from there into the hole. So okay. I know that this is 45 feet. I've paced it off. Again, a lot like the pitching, the hole is, is sending me information. All the, all the grass and all the slope 
going up to this hole is feeding me information. So much like a basketball player, I am, I'm seeing this putt from the hole back. And I'm, I'm, I'm seeing everything. I'm gathering all the information I can. As far as slope, it does go a little bit back uphill. It's 45 feet. I'm looking at the hole. It's feeding me information. I'm gathering that. I'm processing that. You get into your routine and free it up just like a basketball player. Okay, I can run up there and tap that one in. I mean, know, not, not, not much stress. And, and John, amplify your point about the fact that, you, you, you know, if it goes in great, you know, the better putters on the PGA Tour, you know, make roughly one of ten from this distance over the course of a, of a season on the right. PGA Tour, about ten percent. Right. Now, do you subscribe to what Jack Nicklaus always thought, that three-foot circle, yeah. that if you accomplish that, you've accomplished your goal of putts of this distance? That's a good place to start, but again, I, I, I really want to be precise. Like okay. I mentioned, I want to do all my work right here. I don't want to have to go up and then stress about the next one. Golf is stressful enough. I, I want to make sure that my work is done, my process is allowing me to run up there and, and have it you know, two feet and in. Three feet is absolutely acceptable when you're 45 feet or, or longer, absolutely. I want to get a, a little bit more in where I, I don't have to stress on that second one. So again, I'm gathering the information. I know this is 45 feet. It's going back uphill just a little bit. Even on my practice stroke, I'm still looking at the hole, processing everything that it can possibly give me. You know, if anybody notices with you, you just said it. You're looking at the hole during your practice stroke. Why do you think that's important? I just think it frees up your, your putting stroke. It frees up um, basically all the information that you're getting. This is something I, I did work with Bob Rotella a little bit. Uh, we talked mostly about putting and routine, and he equated, you, I did play basketball. I was a good shooter. Use those athletic talents and, and that athletic ability to you get into your, your, your putting and, and, your, and your other parts of your game. So, you know, being a good shooter, I would always, I'd look at that rim, I would, you know, just let, let the rim feed me all the information, process all that information, and what it does, it just frees up your stroke. You're not, I, I'll look down at, the, down at the, the hole, I'll look back down my line, and then I'm ready to go. You know, basically what you're saying, John, is that, you know, when you're looking at the hole with your practice putting stroke, it's then, you know, getting into your system, into your motor patterns right. to determine the length of your stroke. Your visualization transfers to your body. Exactly. And I, I think if you stand over the putt and you, you're not looking at the hole, all you're doing is you're, you're trying to figure out your stroke, you're trying to figure out your routine, well, you've already done that. I'm, I'm trying to free things up. Again, just process the information, look down the line, and as soon as your eyes get back to the ball, off you go. Well, John, it's been a real pleasure, and I know the viewers have gotten a lot out of this. It's always simple. fun. We try to keep it you. simple. Right? I know you do, and it's, it's great to be at Iowa. We thank the staff, this wonderful facility. We look forward to seeing you next time. On